I think China is the only country in the world right now who can play a decisive leadership role in resisting this dark path and above all by promoting peace. By promoting peace, you completely expose the Western narrative. Right? The West says, oh, we want peace, and yet they're, they're sending nuclear weapons to Asia. Oh, this is going to make Asia safer. How is putting more nuclear submarines in the water in Asia making Asia safer? Because the political system in the United States is no longer able to reform itself, no longer able to deal with basic governance issues, it has to find someone else that it can blame to shift the attention to. Well, yeah, we have all these senators now, oh, China, TikTok, oh, it's a danger. No, no, the real danger is you. You are a danger to yourself, and you're turning that danger into a danger to the world. Right? You're using this as an excuse to become more aggressive uh, to China. Maybe to feed your military industrial complex. Maybe your real objective is to try to, okay, if the, if the dollar collapses, then we'll go to war because then all we'll have left is our military. That'll be our only event. I don't know what the dark story is, but I know that it's pointing to a dark future. And this is one of the reasons why I really really uh, uh, support and applaud uh, the Global Security Initiative. This is why I think we have this tremendous accomplishment of uh, bringing Iran and Saudi Arabia back together. This is why when Xi Jinping was in Moscow, I think we should say, go man, go. Try to bring peace to, to Ukraine and then see where you can bring it. Become a global peacemaker. This is the only thing you can do right now to stop this dark force that's coming out of uh, the United States and, and that risks expanding to the other parts of the Western world. We know that, that uh, President Xi tends to talk about things, introduce ideas, but then it takes time for them to mature. So for the last couple of years he's been talking about advancing global peace. We can start that in Asia. I think the first victory of, of this effort is this deal between Iran and Saudi Arabia. I think the issue in Ukraine is the obvious next choice. I think it's going to be difficult, but I'm optimistic. This is the ideal moment for Beijing to enter the picture and say, okay, let's try to resolve this. However, the, 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 one of the things that, that we have to remember about the problems of the world are bigger than Ukraine. In the case of uh, Ukraine, oh, it's all about Ukraine. But no, it's about a lot of other issues. Ukraine is merely one symptom of a much bigger problem, right? And this again is something that Ching Gong was saying. He says, you know, the, the principal contradiction is that we have some who are trying to limit and control others, others who are trying to develop and reach their full potential. So let's not be distracted by the symptom of the problem. Let's go right to the problem. It's really about Western powers trying to control uh, uh, developing powers or trying to assert this old Cold War mentality. Right? That's what's happening. Or as Ching Gong said, uh, Chinese modernization has proven that modernization does not equal westernization, that you can develop without selling your soul, without losing yourself, without, uh, you know, uh, uh, resulting in cultural impoverishment. You don't have to go out and attack others. You don't have to uh, resort to genocide or slavery or these other models. You don't have to use in colonialism and imperialism like the European powers did in the developing world directed against Africa, Latin America, Asia, South Asia, all these places. And China says we found a different way, we found a different model. You might not be able to copy our model Precisely, you'll have to develop your own way of doing it based on your local conditions, local situation, but you don't have to follow the Western model. And in fact, perhaps the Western model is always going to leave you vulnerable to exploitation. This was the, the, the key message, and this is how Chinese modernization is, is different from the West, certainly different from the United States and what we see uh, in, in Europe and Japan. The thing that is difficult for a lot of people to understand about China, th there are a number of things, but one of the things is that everything that China is doing is logical. In the case of China, there were tremendous opportunities to improve governance. On the one hand, we needed to have a party rectification. 
we needed to have a state rectification. And so he leads this very effective anti-corruption campaign. Right? Not only does this clean up governance, governance, it creates these opportunities, these openings for reform, including the, 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 the reform of uh, the digital revolution in governance. The world is, is in danger and it needs this capable government, it needs this responsible government, it needs this government that cares about people. Now we see the government moving very assertively to re-engage at every level as, ex as extensively as possible in, in international affairs through uh, international organizations reinvigorating and, and expanding international organizations like the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, but advancing uh, trade treaties like RCEP, like promoting uh, multilateral reforms, but at the same time building new initiatives like the Global Development Initiative, but putting it in the United Nations to support the shortfalls in the 2030 UN Development Goals, right? And now uh, advancing the Global Security Initiative to try to push back against the, the culture of war. And, uh, you know, we have the, the new initiative that was recently uh, announced uh, but hasn't yet we don't yet have a white paper on it, uh, the Global Civilization Initiative. Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, there's always, there's always a lot of talk and, and always a lot of official discourses and we can sometimes say, okay, well, what does this really mean? But in China, you, I think we have to take these things seriously. They are serious. There is a logic. There is a purpose. And overall, it's a noble purpose. And even though there might be some shortfalls or, or maybe it doesn't always work out exactly the way one hopes, it's better than the alternative, much better.